Hello and welcome to episode 17 of the Business Life podcast brought to you by Food Circle. I'm James. I'm Paul. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Welcome back. And today we're going to talk about e-commerce. Is that right? We're going to talk about... No, we're not. We're talking about pancakes. It's pancake day. <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. pancake day. Let me just set the at scene the time point. of recording. Yeah, at the time of recording. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be pancake day whenever you go to listen to this. That would be really mental. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's pancake day. Let me set the scene. We've got a nice... It's a really nice day outside. Yep. It is Tuesday, the 1st of March. Yep. Uh, it's 20 past 3 in the afternoon in the office... Um, and it's Pancake Day. This is going to be nothing to do with Pancake Day. No. Pancake Day does my head in, I'll be totally honest. Why? I don't get it. Have pancakes when you want. Stop imposing yourself on people's fun and enjoyment. No, but Pancake Day is imposing itself on everybody else. Is it? Have pancakes. Oh, there's a picture of my pancake. I'm sick of pancakes. Well, the origins of it are um, Shrove Tuesday, isn't it? And yeah. You, uh, and what's that? You use up your um, ingredients in your house, your fat and your eggs and your flour and everything. Yeah. And then you give something up for Lent, don't you? That's the idea of it. Well, yeah, but no, that's not the case anymore, is I think it? so. I think that's the idea of it. You don't it? go through all your ingredients in your house now. You, you go out and buy pancake mix, so stop doing it. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know, it's just a tradition, isn't it? It's, uh, it's not yeah, harming it's, anybody. So, it's about time uh, it was but stopped. If I'm wrong on the uh, origins, then um, let, let us know. Get it's about touch. time it was stopped. Have pancakes yeah. when you want. Stop banning things, will you? <laughs> I'm joking, of course. I, I do. I probably won't make pancakes tonight. I can't be bothered, but I, I do like the odd one. I like them in America. You know, when you go to America and you have them for, them for breakfast over there, maple syrup and sausage and stuff. I hop. Yeah, and um, and bacon. Yeah. That's my kind of pancakes. I like American style pancakes as well. The thicker ones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I'm not a fan of the English ones where it's dead thin and you roll it up and you have it with lemon and all that. That's mm. not did, you have, did you have crepes when you were in France? Uh, I think we did have one, yeah. You think? Well, I had a rare burger as well, so I did quite a lot of crepes. Mm. Um, <laughs> to be totally honest with Excellent. you. Excellent. And I did eat one as well. Uh, yeah, we did, but this, you know, it's not, it doesn't taste any better. I like the savoury ones with cheese in and stuff. It's good. Oh, I didn't have one of them. Oh, it's good. Um, anyway. A savoury so, pancake is a Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, it's not though, is it? Because Yorkshire pudding is meant to be a bit more crispy and it's a different shape. Mm. Whereas a, a crepe is a f- uh, pancake, a flat pancake, and then you put your fillings inside it and then you f- it's folded over. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's enough pancake chat. Um, let's get into it. E-commerce. Uh, in fact, we need to uh, we need to do the intro first. So let's do the intro first. And now we can talk about e-commerce. Mm. Um, so uh, we're an e-commerce business, aren't we? Yep. And um, I think it's I think it's never been easier, probably, to uh, set up an e-commerce business. Like you don't have to um, have web design skills um, or any of that sort of stuff. You can just there's plenty of platforms out there where you can um, where you can set up a, uh, an e-commerce business. Uh, without um, having to know how to build a website in particular. Yep. And the, the costs of it aren't probably as dramatically high as what people think that they are No. as well. No. So um, in terms of like barriers to entry in general with e-commerce, it's probably quite low. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, it depends what sort of level you want to get to. If you want to start a, um, you know, a, a, um, a little business on the side uh, where, I don't know, selling bits of jewellery or something whilst you've got another job, full-time job, and you want to do this on the side and set up a little um, jewellery shop, for example. Um, yeah, there's very minimal barriers to entry. Uh, however, just because you set the website up doesn't mean you're going to get loads of orders. No. Um, you have to, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I meant in terms of actually setting up a website. I think people probably perceive it to be a lot more complex than it actually is. Mm. Um, obviously, the actual business side of it and having an idea that works and running the actual business itself and stock and sales and marketing and all that stuff, that's where the complexity comes into mm. it. Yeah, and um, picking the right platform as well. Some of them are terrible. Yeah, so uh, we use Shopify, don't we? We're quite open about that, um, which is you know very good. Yeah. Suits our needs. Simple mm-hmm. enough. 
but there are other ones out there as well, which uh, you know we've had experience of uh, WordPress, haven't we? WooCommerce, terrible. Which we didn't Shopify is the best. We didn't really get along with, but there's other ones in the big commerce and stuff like that as well, mm. which is open source, I believe. Don't know what that means. No, I ain't got a clue what open source. We're not going to get te- technical on this because I don't have any idea what that means. No, I just yeah. I just know that it's open source. So, okay, so uh, we can put that out there, confident in the knowledge that that's correct. Mm. Yeah, move on from that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Shopify, I'm just going to say it. I don't care what anyone thinks. I don't care if you disagree. Shopify is the best. In fact, you're wrong if you think Shopify is not. Mm. This is totally wrong. Shopify is the best by a mile. Oh, all right, Magento as well is uh, is, is pretty good. Um, Magento is for the big boys, though, really. Uh, mm. But, yeah, Shopify is, is amazing. Shopify turned our business around. We wasted our first seven months with WooCommerce, WordPress. Uh, it was absolutely terrible. Um if you if you're uh, you know computer science um, sh- masters in computer science yeah you probably be alright with WordPress or whatever you might be do better than us but if you're your bog standard you want to get a site up you want to start a business e-commerce you don't really have much web development experience you don't need it with Shopify mm. we uh, use WooCommerce and uh, WordPress for the first seven months and the website broke it was awful and Shopify we've used it ever since. And it's absolutely amazing. Minimal problems, it's isn't it? It's absolutely really. class. Um, yeah. yeah, and everything's kind of um, made simple. Yes. Um, have, you, have you heard the um, How I Built This episode with yes. the Shopify founder as well? Yeah, he's, he's Canadian. Yeah, uh, and I think his, you know, his, um, his mission when he set out to do it was to make it you know, as simple as possible to... Uh, to create an e-commerce website, mm. I think he's achieved that. I like simplicity. Simplicity works in e-commerce. Yeah. Um, your messaging. Uh, I was talking to some uh, to some students about this on Monday. You need uh, yesterday. Um, you need to, your marketing needs to be simple. Effective marketing is always simple. Your model, your business model, simple is best. Um, Setting your website up simply, easy to navigate. No, nope, it's dead simple where everything is. That is the way forward if you want to start an e-commerce business. It's easy to start overcomplicating things, isn't it? And because it, because it's in your head, and it makes sense to you. But you need to make it simple for people to know straight away, and they don't even have to think about what they're doing on your website. It's just dead planned out for them. Yeah, I think uh, a common thing that's easy to fall into, which you know, it's it's, it's actually difficult to do this, but. Um, you've got to think like your customer uh, yep. in setting up um, a website, an e-commerce website. Um, it's easy to fall into not doing that and setting it up for yourself and what you prefer, mm-hmm. um, which I think it's hard not to do that because you know, you're know you looking at it from a point of view of um, how can I lay things out, What's what sort of um, budget have I got for you know themes or whatever. Uh, what sort of budget have I got for plugins and additional apps and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not all down to budget, but you, you, you can look at it from a very um, in, insular point of view, inward-looking point of view, um, without actually testing it and using it for yourself. Yes. Uh, and when you do that, or when you put yourself into the mind of your customer, um, using different devices as well, or responding to feedback that customers give you, gives you a different perspective on how to uh, how to lay out and how to set up a website? Yes, I think we we were at an, uh, we had an advantage from the start because I am a very simple person. Mm-hmm. I think very simply. I'm very lazy on the internet. I'm one of these people. At least I can't bother if it's, if it's like instruction manuals. I throw in the bin straight away. Mm-hmm. I just want to get on with it, figure it out myself. So I think that way in terms of you know, I'm one of those the, the, like the general public where it needs to be straight in front of me. Yeah. Whereas, um, I'd say you, for example, would be more patient. I'd say as a as a web user. Yeah, probably. I um, I tend to if I'm buying something online, I will um, delve into my options more. I will look into stuff more. Um, not necessarily to do with the layout of websites and stuff like that, but you know, my options when I come to purchase something, I will mm-hmm. look into it more. But also, yeah, I probably will have a bit more patience if I really want to buy something. I've committed to that mentally. Um, I will have more patience for, you know, um, more complex 
layouts or design flaws or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but there's only a certain extent to which I'll try and figure that out. And if it's just if it's just bad, then you know it'll lose my attention like anybody else, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, what website Zara. I don't know if they've changed it, but they redid their website a few months ago, and oh my, it was the worst. It was terrible. I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Email us if, if you do. Uh, but it was so bad. It was so badly laid out, and it was so hard to get to men, the men's section. It took me like four clicks, which mm. is too much. I think it sometimes... Took forever. I think sometimes websites can be too flashy. Yeah, it was. Don't you think? You know, and yeah. it's like, you go on there, and it's meant to look all immersive, and it's got... Uh, animations moving around and you know uh, it might have like footage moving yeah. around behind buttons and stuff like that and you press something and it doesn't actually take you to a new page it just kind of like shunts you downwards on a page you know that sort of thing yeah. I, I, I'm not a fan of that I prefer like more simple kind of you press that button it takes you to that page you press that mm-hmm. button it takes you to that page. I prefer like that more kind of um I don't know if it's n- linear kind of layout. I don't know, more yep. simplistic way. Yeah, absolutely. When you click somewhere, you know where you go in. It's not kind of, it's not kind of. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the word fancy. is. Fancy. It's not. No, yeah, not as fancy. Not maybe not as immersive. Like I know p- people are striving for that now with the technology developing and AI and all that sort of thing. But I think I prefer straightforward kind of you click and you know you know what it's going to take you to. I'd say the majority of people are like that. Unless it's a unless you're a virtual reality business or an AR business, fair enough. I'd expect on your website to be some pretty in, impressive stuff on there. Yeah. But if you're trying to sell stuff, number one tip for everyone: make it as easy and as simple as possible. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for innovation. I'm all for new developments, new technologies, and stuff like that. If it makes the experience better, mm. you know, if you if you if they develop it in future where you put a headset on or you put a pair of glasses on and you walk around and it improves the experience and makes it simpler, makes it better, more efficient, whatever it might be, great. But if it's just if it's kind of like for um, for aesthetic purposes or just to be fancy, mm. I, I don't. I tend to prefer simple, straightforward. I've been thinking about this metaverse thing recently. Um, someone asked me, would you ever run ads on the metaverse and all that? I don't know if it's going to... It's interesting, and it looks like it could be amazing, but what's the number one problem with it? You have to put a headset on. Mm. 3D uh, tellies didn't, didn't hit off, did they? No. Going to see films in 3D didn't take off. Why? No. Because you have to put them... By the way, uh forgot to do it at the start of the podcast. This podcast may contain some swear words. Mm. So before I swear, I just want to get that in there. Yes. You have to put all them pissing glasses on, and <laughs> it's so annoying. Uh, you gave us that warning one. just to say that. <laughs> my uh, my uh, mum and dad used to have a 3D tally. Remember when Sky used to do 3D football and golf and stuff? Yeah. It I was do. just a... When, when, we talk, when did that come in? Like 2012? Yeah. Like a decade ago? Sort of. That's kind of time. That's the problem with this metaverse thing. I don't know if it's going to... I yeah. just don't. I don't know much about it. What What's the? Um, does it cost anything to get one of these metaverse headsets? Yeah, yeah, like three hundred quid. Is it? Yeah. I know um, a game gaming um, industry tried it as well, didn't they? With uh, I don't know if Xbox or PlayStation. HTC. Yeah, Oculus. What's yeah. that? I don't know. Yeah, I remember that coming out. Um, I remember the original. Uh, you know, kind of iteration of this with. Uh, do you remember iToy on PlayStation? No. It's like um, a little webcam thing. You put it on top of your TV, mm. and the games were like interactive, a bit like Wii, but like it kind of recorded your movements moving around. And I remember you like pop balloons with your hands and stuff like that. Uh, that was the original rubbish. Original uh, immersive gaming experience, and you know it's come a long way since then. It is impressive if you can get it right, but it's kind of that jump between making it accessible to people, mm. I suppose. Yeah, like you know, there's a big difference between you know a, a flight simulator machine or something like that that costs exactly tens of thousands of pounds versus something in your living room. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it's just meant to be um, like it's meant to you, you can have a meeting in the metaverse. Mm. Oh, come on, you can do it on Zoom. You can yeah. you can be all sat in the same room and you're an avatar. So I've taken away personal thing already it's just some bloody 
avatar like on Snapchat or something, you're sat around in a meet in a virtual meeting space. Do me a favour, will you? Yeah, I don't really get that. Just That's, do Zoom. Um, is is it another? Uh, are we becoming another step removed from being actual human beings? Well, you know, Facebook love that. Don't we're they? already getting there with the you know online profiles and stuff like that, and how much different people are online, I suppose, to what they are in reality um, is this just another step where kind of you've got your own persona in real life and that's becoming increasingly distant from this avatar or this memoji or whatever that you've got yeah um, that you portray yourself as yeah I know anyway we're straying again into social media here aren't we but uh, rather than e-commerce but yeah but maybe that's if that might be the future of e-commerce that is virtual that sounds that's quite interesting a virtual shop but why not just go to a shop yeah, or it, order it online and get it from too far. I don't think we need it. We it, don't need to put a headset on to go shopping. Just go to the bloody shop. Yeah, it's, it's a, like this. These next same day delivery things get here and all that. They're massive in London, aren't they? Mm. What? Well, just go to the corner shop. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, it's obviously people demand convenience, don't they? It's mm. just can these innovations nail the convenience aspect of it? Because if it's making it less convenient to people and more costly. It, you know, it's uh, not bound to work, is it? People don't want to interact with other humans. Mm. That's what it comes down to. I want my shopping delivered to my door, and I'm sat in there, you know, in North London eating ramen or whatever. It is. <laughs> uh, do you know what I mean? I just uh, to to me anyway. I don't get it. I, I still prefer doing clothes shopping in store. Me, hardly ever buy clothes on the internet. If I want to go, I'd like to go in and and try them on. Want to, you know? Yeah. I don't like it. I've got to send it. But I bought some trainers the other day. Horrible. I've got to send them back. I can't. Uh, more hassle. Yeah, I'm sort of fifty-fifty on that because I do find it a bit stressful going into a store. But also, I know what you mean. Like the mm. experience of trying it on can save you a lot of faff. Yeah, um, I don't find it stressful. And at all. probably better for the planet as well because people, you know, cl- the clothing industry is massive in it for um, sending stuff back and returns and all that kind of thing. Mm. I just dread to think, you know, people ordering stuff in ten different sizes and then sending nine of them back. I dread to think the packaging yeah. and carbon footprint and a bloody manpower processing everything that, that that generates. Black Friday, we did it didn't we, Green Friday, that's what the Green Friday thing is all about, the amount of returns from Black Friday is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Which is, you pay, you're doing your carbon footprint twice. Yeah, uh, I don't know, I, I, like, I suppose that that's the advantage of it in many people's eyes, isn't it, but how do we make people more kind of deliberate and more um, conscious of that when they're shopping? Because, you know, it's maybe a, um, an un- unintended consequence that people don't think about. No. The impact that it's having on you know, not just the environment, but various um, various things. I will say, I'll say one thing. In-store shopping is not dead. In-store shopping is um, alive and kicking. Yeah. Um, it's. I don't think it'll ever be replaced. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love us to have a shop. I think it'd be brilliant. I, I really think it's um, there's still a big opportunity. So if you, if you want to start, it costs more. If you want to start a store, it costs more for it to be bricks and mortar, obviously. But there's a lot of brands that are now doing both, where they have them, they have walk-in experience and online as well, and you can merge them together. Yeah. Um, like Shopify have a, a checkout link to Shopify. Yeah, you can do it in. Um Sainsbury's and Tesco's and probably other stores as well, can't you? Where you can um, download the app mm. and um, scan scan stuff on your phone. That's the future, uh, in my opinion. Instead of you know using, I mean, in Tesco you can use one of those handheld things as well. But rather yeah. than having to go to a checkout um, or having to scan everything through yourself, you can scan it as you go along on your phone. Yep. B and M bargains. Um, what ninety eight percent of their trade is walk in and they're opening mm. stores every single week. Yeah, and uh, you know, cashless and um, not just cashless, but you know, like um, checkoutless shopping as well is yeah. probably com- you know, the future as well. I know Amazon are, um, well, they have been um, working on that, haven't they? Yes. I just yeah. thought something. Yeah, that was it. I was buying some uh, koi food um, for my, my little fish yeah. in my pond. And I went in there, it's at the garden centre down the road here in, in Dinnington. And um, I went in there, I was, talk, I was chatting to him, and I, I 
bought this tub of koi food and I saw on his, on his checkout he had his laptop and he had Shopify open mm. I could see like all his revenue and stuff yeah uh, but I just said to me oh you use Shopify I said yeah it's the payment goes straight through so when I paid for the thing it comes through as an order yeah it's Shopify POS it's yeah, yeah. Oh, is that it yeah and you you order the little machine card machine or whatever all right. Or you can set it up on a device, I think, as well. Yeah. I believe. I've looked into it for us because you know it might be something we uh, explore in future with a store and everything. Mm. And it all just links up to all your um, inventory and everything, which means that you don't have to, you know, mess about saying, you know, I've got ten units to sell there and ten units to sell online. Mm. It just takes it off as as you go. Yeah. Absolutely, and same if you start in a bricks and mortar shop or cafe or whatever location, is obviously massive. Um, yeah, absolutely critical. I think the uh, the trouble as well, 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 one of the um, considerations I should say of bricks and mortar as well is that you you're um, you know you're more susceptible to considerations like weather and you know last co- what we've seen the last couple of years, yeah, lockdowns and stuff like that can um, make or break, can't they? Yes, um, what you're doing. So, uh, so yeah, e-commerce, you know, it's got its, um, it's got its advantages, definitely. But as we've covered, I think there's uh, there's definite, if not disadvantages, there's uh, plus points to uh, traditional ways of shopping or mm-hmm. uh, a hybrid Absolutely. approach as well. Yeah, the future of e-commerce is uh, maybe VR, AR, or more integrated with. Um, you know, uh, bricks and mortar. Yeah. Um, the future is um, sustainability. Yeah. Is absolutely massive. We're in a fortunate position, and it's intended that we are very sustainable, one of the most sustainable retailers you can be, i.e., we sell surplus food, but we want to improve our um, carbon footprint as well. I'm always looking to try and do um, to improve that genuinely. It's a big thing on our agenda at the moment. Yeah. Um, so sustainable e-commerce is coming. Yeah, I think delivery companies are getting um, more more kind of progressive with that as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's only going to help the whole piece because you can partner with companies that have got that at the front of their values as well. Mm-hmm. I know DPD use uh, electric vehicles, don't they, for deliveries now as well? Yeah. And they're the most, uh, they claim to be, I think, the most um, CO2 efficient uh, delivery company out there. And their uh, packaging that they send is recyclable as well. Yeah, I invested in a company called Arrival, mm-hmm. who are developing. Um, well, to be fair, Amazon are doing it as well. Uh, it's then uh, they do electric vans and stuff. Yeah, I think they got the UPS contracts in the states. I'm not 100 percent sure, or maybe mm-hmm. they just lost out. I can't remember. But um, yeah, that's the future of deliveries is electronic. 100. percent That'll be massive. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I enjoyed our e-commerce chat, James. It's yeah, nice, like, cool absolutely. No, I just, just want to say, you know, if you work in this space or you uh, want to comment on this as a consumer, mm. then, um, then get in touch. Let us know. Let us know what your thoughts are. We want thoughts. to be uh, want to be interactive, don't we? we want to be as uh, sociable as possible and uh, get people's views. And you know, you know, we don't get that many uh, interactions or emails about the podcast. But if you do want to comment or you do want to have your say on something, um, let us know, and we'll we'll read it out next time. Hundred percent. Yes. Move on to my favourite start. My favourite part of the yeah. Uh, podcast. Questions from our customers. And I will start with this question from Jenny, which is uh, Dragons Den related. So again, sorry, people that were banging on about this again, but we've been asked a question. So, do you think preparing for Dragons Den made you improve your understanding of the financial uh, aspect of the business? Or did you have it sorted by then anyway? No, I don't know. We made it all up. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's we did. Um, slightly a facetious clue. answer. We, did, I, we, we didn't have a clue. Well, no, what it did do is it made us gather a lot of data and information about our business to share with them as oh, yeah. part of that process, which was helpful to me. Yeah, fair, yeah. Because it's information that we'd not looked into uh, otherwise. Yeah. Um, financial and sort of... Uh, what would you call it? More sort of conceptual, mm. concept related. Um, but yeah, in terms of our forecasts and stuff like that, it was uh, very, very difficult mm. um, because we didn't really know. We were we were growing quite uh, unpredictably at that point, mm. um, and our costs were a little bit unpredictable as well. Mm. We didn't really have any like um, that many. F- 
fixed costs, you know, like staff and um, premises wise and stuff like that. So, uh, in that sense, uh, yeah, the forecasts were completely finger in the air because we didn't really have much to base them on. Yeah, no, no business that starts up knows to can forecast. No, even if you're in year one, year two. You can only really accurately forecast if you've got ten, you know, five, ten years of steady trading. Um, but yeah, forecasting as a starting business is just, yeah, just don't worry if you're if you're running a startup and you need to do some forecast and you're making it all up. That's fine. Just don't go too mental. Yeah, it's got to be an educated guess, yeah. I suppose. But it's um, like you said, um, the more the more and more you trade, the more you tweak and refine those forecasts and get better yeah. at predicting what's coming or. You know, you know, you sort of know your costs more as you go along, and you settle into whatever it might be. Like we know we've got this cost for premises or whatever, but we were going through a phase of like, well, we went through various phases, didn't we? But at that point, we were like starting to grow, but we didn't really know to what extent it'd take off. And then we've been through phases of like premises costs going up and down when we had you know um, those units down the road and stuff like that. So you know it's quite unpredictable early on, but you you tweak it and refine it the more the more you go along, don't you? Absolutely. Good. I think that's answered that one. So hopefully that helps. Um, we do have uh, another question from Diane. An email. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you, Diane. Uh, and Diane asks, other than Food Circle, obviously, yes. what is your favourite business? What is your favourite business? That's a good question. It is a good question. That is that is a fabulous question. Though. I'll kick off, and let's not take football teams. Let's put football teams aside for the moment. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go with Greg's. Yeah, that's a good shout, actually. Um, I did think about Greg's as soon as you said that. Go on, give us, uh, give us a bit more on Greg's. I love Greg's. I love Greg's coffee. They don't like the pizza slices. I think the pizza slices are rank. But I like um, <laughs> most of the things they do. And the the, the um, employees are great. They are really actually nice people, and Tim Hortons actually. There's a new one open near us in Crystal Peaks here in Sheffield. Mm. New, new I've never tried it, but it sounds sounds good. But yeah, Greg's is such a good business. Really greatly priced. Yeah. Um, just it is a quality northern company that has done so well. Yeah. Can um, I uh, can I shout out the? Um, you mentioned the the um, great customer service in Greg's. Yeah. And great staff in there. I went in the one up here from for a sandwich last week. Mm. And um, somebody came in and said, "Oh, I'm getting um, you know, they were just chit chatting with the the lady that worked in Greg's, and she said, uh, "I'm getting a pizza slice for my son because he's in hospital, he's got pneumonia." And uh, the lady in there said, "Oh, um, does he want a free a free bun on the house?" And she uh, she gave her a free free uh, dessert sweet to give to him, which is just Fantastic. just really nice. Yeah, they and, are. Uh, I was next in the queue, and you know, I thought that's that's just great. Warms the heart to see um, that sort of caring approach being yeah. given. Didn't surprise me. Didn't surprise me at Greg's. I've done business with Greg's in a former life. Used to go to their big HQ in Newcastle, and even the people working in head office were really nice as well. Yeah. It's a great company. Round of, <laughs> great company. Round of applause for Greg's. Yeah. So I tell you what, Greg's, if you are listening. Um, Greg, Greg's listening at Greg's. <laughs> yeah, hello, Greg. I assume it's run by someone called Greg. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> um, uh, oh, what was I was going to say, yeah, if they did crumpets, that'd be brilliant. Ooh, yeah. You know, like hot crumpets in oh, the morning. Yeah. I'll tell you what. On oh yeah, I'd be all over that. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, good. Yeah, Greg's is a good one. Um, what companies do I like? Um, I like. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think now. I like Lidl. The supermarket. Mm -hmm. I think the quality and value that you get in there is spot on. I don't have a little. Don't have a little around me. Yeah, and I think the the stores are brilliant now because you know, like they had a reputation, didn't they, ten fifteen years ago, of being like you know, a bit of a jumble sale, a bit kind of yeah, a bit of naff. But whenever I go in one now, they're always spot on. Yeah, you know, you you'd walk if you didn't know where you were going into, you'd walk in there and you you'd you know. You could, you could easily be convinced that you were in any other supermarket, the way it's laid out and stuff like that. It's uh, come on leaps and bounds. So, yeah, I get most of my, my uh, <coughs> excuse me, most of my stuff at Lidl for uh, food shopping and stuff like that. Brilliant. Um, what Good else one. do I like? Um, uh, you know, DPD. We've already mentioned DPD, but I uh, I think they're a good company. Yeah, quality. Um, really good. Good career. Uh, let me think. What else have we got? I'm just trying to think. Um, 
That's all right, you're giving two. I know, I'm just trying to think of more like independent ones or smaller ones mm. that I use. Don't know. We'll get back to you, Diane, if we think of any more. Um, good podcast, James. I enjoyed this today. Thank you. And thank you, Diane, for your uh, question and Jenny as well. Yeah. Um, what else are we doing? Anything? Uh, no, I think, I think we're good to wrap up there. It's pretty um, tight, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good one today. Good. It's pretty tight. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd just some of the stuff that's going on in the world at the moment is just um, it's, it's sickening in it sobering so hopefully we've brought some um, you know a bit of a distraction to anyone that's listening to this away from what's going on at the moment um, yeah because yeah it's just absolutely just yeah I don't even know what to say it's dominating everyone's thoughts at the moment isn't it and this is the um, if you know if you're not aware of what we're talking about we're not making it clear the obviously the Ukraine crisis mm. Um yeah, it's dominating everyone's thoughts, isn't it? And rightly so, because, um, you know, uh, a lot of people have been affected by it through no fault of their own, both Ukrainians and, and ordinary Russians as well. I'll tell you what, a, a, a shout out to someone that's definitely not going to hear this. Mark Austin on Sky News and the, the rest of the team there. I like to put Sky News on in the morning when I'm having breakfast and that. He's done the, he does a report from there every morning. Mm. That, is, he's, that is brave, that, isn't it? The impress over there. Yeah, it is bravery. Being a oh, he's brilliant as well. Being a journalist in a war zone. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. It's uh, it must be so surreal. It must be, you know, you you must get um, some you know a level of trauma from that. I know. Just even from reporting, you know, not not even necessarily fighting or anything. Mm. So uh, yeah, but yeah, it's just you know, how it goes out to everyone being affected I, as someone. I, not making this all about me. It's someone that has, has been to Kiev, has the pleasure of being going to Kiev. Mm. Um, I just can't believe it's now a war zone. That's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's a totally normal, uh, bustling European city. And now it's become a, you know, a battlefield. It's just yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unimaginable, isn't it? And uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people in this country or, you know, other part, other parts of the world as well that are worried about family and yeah and stuff like that. So uh, this this the yeah, thing it's you, painful. You never know. You don't know what's around the corner. Um, you know, there's people in in Ukraine that two months ago had Christmas normally or whatever. I know there's been tension there for a while, but they had a normal Christmas and everything. All of a sudden, you know, there's a war going on. You got to make the most of life. You've got to make you know. This is why you've got to go for things in life and just you know. Um, be grateful for stuff and just go for it because you just never know what's going to happen. We lived through a, a really strange, a big part of history with COVID. Yeah. And now this as well. And back yeah. to back. So, yeah, yeah, people look back on this as... Yeah, definitely. It feels like um, the last few years and currently has been a big test of people's resolve mm -hmm. uh, and continues to do so. So, yeah, our thoughts are with uh, with everybody affected. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah, Mark Austin, fantastic coverage. I recommend anyone checks that out, 501. On Sky, yeah. Um, it's the the end of the podcast is the time where we ask people for feedback. Yeah, and um, what can people do if they've got good feedback for us, James? If you've got good feedback for us, you can let us know personally if you like uh, via email. Yeah, hello at foodcirclesupermarket dot com or social media or Discord. Yeah, uh, if you like. Yeah, uh, or you can leave us a five star rating. Yes, yes. And a nice comment. And what do people do if they want to? criticise or leave bad feedback well you know if people if people think the podcast is terrible and uh, and think I'm a dickhead and uh, um, I shouldn't be doing a podcast <laughs> and if they take exception exception to your hat they take acceptance to my uh, exception exception <laughs> exception to my pink hat um, then just email me don't make it don't do it publicly please um, just email me with, with some feedback and, and your abuse or whatever um and yeah, I'm more than happy to receive that and take it on board. Um, so yeah, no, if you've got any um, foul-mouthed anger to, to spew about the podcast, please just just email me at paul at foodcirclesupermarket.com. Or otherwise, yeah. Or uh, we've not have had be, any of that yet. It doesn't have to be foul-mouthed. It can be uh, non-foul-mouthed, if you like. And I'll read it out on the podcast as well, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, but we're not adding any yet, sadly. So no. until we get to, until I get some in my inbox, I'll, I'll share it. Good. What's for tea tonight? What's for tea tonight? Well, I'm playing football. I'm not coming round for tea, by the way. I'm just asking you what you're... <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm playing football seven o'clock till eight, and I like to get in. Um, and uh, and actually, my, um, Neek's my missus is working tonight, um, so I'll get in. I might do. Sometimes I have cheese and beans on toast mm. uh, and ham as well. It's one of my favourite meals. Like when you get in, away, you want to do something quick that knocks up easily. Yeah, but I might have ham and cheese toasters tonight. No pancakes. Honestly, I'm, I can't be bothered. No, I'm not, I am definitely not going to mess around with hot pancakes. Mind you, I'm going to my mum and dad's before football, so they might have. Uh, mm. I'm just thinking how they might do. Might be able to spare a pancake for you. But yeah, no. What about you? Pancakes. Excellent. Next. Excellent. Are you going to do the Yorkshire thing of having them with stew? No. Or are you going to have sweet ones? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, that's that's uh, abnormal in my opinion. So. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to do some content on that today on our social media. Mm. That's something different because on Instagram it's oh, it's a picture of a pancake. Oh my god, I'm so boring. A picture of a pancake. Everyone, listen. You can uh, check back on this. Check our Instagram post mm. on uh, Pancake Day, Tuesday the first of March, um, and it will not be your bog standard. Oh, here's a pancake with chocolate melted on it. And it's just a bit. It's just a bit flat. That sort of content, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, it is it's a bit flat. You got to, you got to take a whisk sometimes, don't you? And do something like a bit different, one. right? That's I think that means it's time to end. I'm, yeah, I'm going to do a Yorkshire one where about the stew and pancakes thing. Let's see if it's a Yorkshire thing or if they do it all over the country. Yeah, it'll never catch on. Let us know. All right, well, see, uh, see you next time. Bye, Tara. Pretty rubbish, wasn't it?